usually try to avoid the Huffington Post. It's a lunatic liberal rag whose clickbaitery ways often rivals that of BuzzFeed, the liberal cesspool of the internet. It's a crappy website that has an equally crappy YouTube presence, and it does exactly what BuzzFeed does. It produces short videos pushing the liberal agenda. Now granted, BuzzFeed's videos are a lot more mindless, but neither are actually honest. So I decided it's about time to take a look at one on Islam and see just how ridiculous they could get. We need to talk about Islam. Do we really have to? All right, go ahead. You know that religion with 1.6 billion people comprising about 25% of the world's population? Yeah, that Islam. Who cares? It wouldn't matter if Islam was comprised of 100% of the world's population, how many people believe a thing doesn't have any impact whatsoever on whether or not it's true. And truth matters. You see, Islam is currently the world's second largest religion. Christians, don't worry, you're still number one. No, you're just both factually incorrect based on the evidence that we have. You'd be more honest to say, Muslims, you're the second most delusional group in the world. But I suspect you wouldn't like that. Even though it's been around for 1400 years, Islam is still woefully misunderstood, especially in the United States. Despite what your crazy but lovable uncle says on Facebook, Islam does not promote hate. I'm not commanded to kill the infidels. It all depends on how your Muslim beliefs operate. While it is true that the most hate-filled passages don't actually come from the Quran, they do come from various hadiths, which are traditional teachings containing statements from Muhammad, which form the second most important source of religious information for the majority of Muslims. And because that's true, good old HuffPo here is being dishonest and not giving you the full story. Quran. The Quran, as a whole, promotes faith, hope, and peace. So, when you see stuff like this, know that it's always taken out of context. No, you're just not being honest about where these ideas are coming from, nor the importance that a lot of Muslims place in these teachings. Because at the end of the day, just because you don't agree with what these people are doing, it doesn't stop them from doing it. There really isn't any wrong way to do religion, other than doing it at all, because again, at the end of the day, you might not agree with how they're doing Islam, but they don't agree with how you're doing it either. And if you don't believe me, let's ask the experts. If I were to open up um, a book like Harry Potter and just chose one line where it's the excruciatus spell, where it's like, cause the most pain you possibly can and say, this is what Harry Potter is teaching. That's sort of how people look at the Quran. Eh, not so much. I mean, it's pretty hard to take things out of context that arguably shouldn't be there in the first place. Now, keep in mind what we're talking about here. This isn't some piece of popular fiction like Harry Potter. This is supposedly the word of some god, handed down by his prophet. You would have thought that Allah would have been more careful, the exact same thing you might have thought about the Christian God in the Bible, but neither of them were, clearly, and that's because we have no reason to think that either of them exist at all. Sharia. Politicians seem to be obsessed with this Arabic word. What is this thing that we call Sharia? Sharia. Sharia. And Sharia. 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 51% highly respected number of polling groups want to be governed according to Sharia. You know what Sharia is. A lot of people don't actually know what Sharia is. Sharia is often translated as law. It doesn't really mean that. It means a path or a guidance. How do you give charity? How do you get married? How do you pray? It's guidelines on how to live your life. While that may be true, and wow, politicians and talking heads don't know what they're talking about. You don't say. But the fact remains that Sharia simply does not fit in with most modern secular nations. It violates established legal statutes in most Western countries. So, yeah, a lot of these people are clueless. The fact remains that Sharia law and Western democracy simply does not coexist. Oh, uh, and an FYI, trolls, there are currently zero bills in Congress trying to institute Sharia. That's a conspiracy theory, and a pretty dumb one. That's because Muslims constitute less than 1% of the population of America. There just isn't enough popular support to do it. But, you know, reality. Not really your strong suit, is it? Jihad. America is only familiar with jihad in its most violent form, the idea that Islam should defend itself against those who wish to tear it down. 
Well, maybe that's because that's the form that modern radical Muslims have ensured people understand. And it isn't against people who want to tear down Islam, it's against people who want to get in the way of Islamic expansion, because they, like all religions if you get right down to it, want to rule the world. They want to be the only religion. They want to force their beliefs onto everyone. And it's this kind of expansionistic, often violently expansionistic beliefs that we simply cannot allow. It's an Arabic word that means exerted effort or struggle to better oneself. So Muslims can do a jihad to get more sleep, to go out on more dates, to get their lazy butt off the ground and hit the gym, all legitimate forms of jihad. Yet that's not what anyone's talking about in the modern world. Yes, it's technically true, jihad can mean that, it's a spiritual struggle against sin, but saying, oh, violent attack against dissenters isn't jihad. Well, it certainly is. You're using a definition that most people don't use, but that doesn't prove a thing about the topic at hand. Hijab. There is a strange, sick obsession with Muslim women who cover their hair. The internet is filled with images and commentary about Muslim women fashion and appearances written by people who frankly don't understand it or are afraid of it. And while they very well might not understand it, I don't think anybody's really afraid of it. A lot of people speak out against it, as I said before, because some Muslim customs simply do not play well in Western societies. Forcing women to dress in a certain way for any reason, religious or otherwise, is seen as violating both equality and freedom of expression in the West. Now, these women might choose to do so, and I personally don't care, but when they're forced into it because Muslim men might rape them if they don't, that's a problem, whether you choose to see it that way or not. In the Quran, there are about two, two verses amongst 6,000 verses that address how we should conduct ourselves when we talk about modesty. Hijab is actually not a word that's used in the Quran. I, I choose to dress this way. It, for me, it really is an outside expression of an inward experience. And that's great. You can choose to do whatever you want to do. But we both know that within the Muslim world, especially in countries under Sharia law, it's not a choice. You wear your hijab or other traditional gear or you get attacked, raped, beaten, or killed. Where exactly is the choice in that? People tend to think Muslim women are limited, and honestly, some are. However, reality check. There have been way more female heads of state in Muslim countries than in the United States. Again, there's less than 1% of the population that are Muslim in the United States, so that's not unexpected. There are, in fact, five Muslim-majority nations that have had a female head of state, those being Indonesia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Turkey, and Kosovo. And you know the ones that haven't? The most religious, like Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And the ones who have had a female head of state, they almost entirely have no recognized state religion. And the ones that do? Women don't get in. But don't let the facts get in the way of your ad campaign for Islam. There are a few Muslim countries, such as Saudi Arabia, that limit uh, Muslim women's rights. They're taking God-given rights that God has given to women and imposing their own views and opinions and what it is that women need to do and not do. They're the ones that are contradicting um, this Islam. They're the ones that are bringing in alien influences into the faith, not the other way around. Uh, no. Because we can go right back to the Quran, and we're not talking about the Hadiths, mind you, but the Quran, and find passages that absolutely say that men are superior to women, and women are supposed to be subservient to men. I mean, take, for example, Quran 434, which reads, Men are in charge of women, because Allah hath made the one of them to excel the other, and because they spend of their property for the support of women. So good women are the obedient, guarding in secret that which Allah hath guarded. But reality, you know, just spin your beliefs however you want, and ignore how others take the same book. Arab, I mean Arab. Do not assume an Arab equals a Muslim or a Muslim equals an Arab. Let me break it down. Muslim is a term that refers to a person who follows the religion of Islam. Arab is a cultural, linguistic, and ethnic term broadly referring to Arabic-speaking people in the Middle East and North Africa. Arabs are those who live in and around the Arabian Peninsula. Today, they are more than 90% Muslim. It is estimated that just over 7% are Christian. So while it's true that not all Arabs are Muslim, it's pretty damn close.
There are millions of non-Muslims in Arab-majority countries who happen to be Christian, Zoroastrian, Baha'i, even atheists. Yeah, those countries that are not under Sharia law, that have largely secular governments, and where Islam has little to no political power. So take for example, Bangladesh. It is 88% Muslim, and the country's national religion is Islam, but it does ban religion-based politics. They are defined as a secular, pluralistic democracy. But you know what? The amount of religious violence against non-Muslims is absurd. There's been a string of high-profile cases of atheists being hacked to death by Muslims. Muslim extremists have been openly attacking Hindus and Buddhists. Religious violence by Muslims has been on the rise in recent years, largely due to the overall increase in religious intolerance among Muslims and the rise of Islamic terrorism worldwide. So while there may be a lot of people in these countries that are non-Muslims, they do face increased violence and threats simply because they don't play along with the majority religious delusion. Hopefully, this has cleared up some of the garbage that jams up your news feed. Nope, it just added to it. But that's because I ended up watching a stupid Huffington Post video hosted by a religious moron with an agenda. And remember, Islam, like any other religion, is complex and requires more than one video to understand it. So, keep reading, talk to actual Muslims, visit a mosque, and remember, an entire religion can never be summed up in just one meme. That's true, but neither can anything else. And Islam, like everything else, is made up of individuals, and individuals do things differently. So you can't sit down and say that all Muslims are X, or all Christians are Y, or all atheists are Z. But I can say that all Muslims and all Christians are delusional idiots because they all believe things for which there's no objective evidence. Not a single one out there doesn't, and that's a problem for those of us who care about having an intellectually based, rationally driven, and logically consistent planet. So whether all Muslims are violent or not, whether all Muslims are extremists or not, all Muslims are still delusional, and even though I don't openly oppose Muslims as individuals, I certainly do oppose Islam as a religion, as I oppose all religions, because it ought to be opposed, because it teaches things that cannot be justified rationally. And that's something I didn't need the idiots at Huffington Post to tell me.